So we're going to start a new series this morning. New series is entitled The Fruit of the Spirit. And so we just finished a series called 30. Um, it, was, it was about a six-week series or something like that. And so I've been praying for a while about, hey, what's next? What do we do next? And a couple years ago, I wanted to do a series on the fruit of the Spirit. Um, and we were trying to do sermon graphics and do all that stuff. And it just kind of didn't come together. And it just wasn't the right moment. And so um, a couple weeks ago, before we went on vacation, my youngest daughter happened to draw a picture which actually is that picture. And, and my youngest daughter had these. She drew that for her mama. And so when I went into our bedroom, uh, Rebecca has pictures that the kids have drawn on her side of the bed on the wall. And I looked at that. I said, where'd that come from? And she told me that Hadley drew that. And I thought it was so precious and so special. I'm like, right then and there, that's what our new sermon series is going to be after I get done, Fruit of the Spirit. So we took that original picture, and I took it last week and tried to uh, manipulate it a little bit. That's actually the original picture, and so, but I took it from a photo that I took on my phone, and then we turned it into a sermon graphic image, and so um, I just think it's so precious. Why don't you give Hadley a hand for contributing to our sermon today, and I know I just embarrassed her, but that's what happens when your kids and your dad's a preacher. But I, I want to talk today from the subject matter. It's on your talk notes. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about Growing like Jesus. Would you just say that with me? Say, growing like Jesus. One more time. Growing like Jesus. Our big idea this morning, and like I said, I'm going to try not to preach super long, but our big idea this morning is this, that you and I were created to be like Jesus. Amen? We were created to be like Jesus Christ as a matter of fact, when we look at Jesus' life, we find that Jesus, even though that he was all God, he was still all man, right? Now, I, I don't understand all that dynamic, how he was all God and all man, all man, all God. I, I don't get all that. I don't get the Trinity, how, how, how God enacts himself in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I don't get all that. That's questions that I'm going to ask God when I die and go to heaven. Actually, we say that we're going to ask questions of God when we die and go to heaven. But in all actuality, we're not going to have time to ask any questions because when we get to glory, we're going to spend all of eternity worshiping and praising Jesus and bowing down at the feet of the Father and saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. All So we might have questions that we want to ask, but I'll be honest that we're probably never going to get them answered. And we're just going to have to deal with that. But the Bible says, listen, in Luke 2, 52, and I'll get to Galatians 5 in a second. The Bible tells us that Jesus grew in four different ways. Jesus grew in wisdom, he grew in stature, and he grew in favor with God and with man. And, and, and here's the deal, that, that, that there's four ways that Jesus grew. He grew intellectually, he grew physically, he grew relationally, and Jesus drew, grew spiritually. And so this, this series is all about, I want to teach us and I want to help us to be like Jesus and understand how we have a part to play in all of our spiritual, spiritual lives. Are you with me so far? We just don't, we just don't accept Jesus and automatically we're it. Amen. We have to grow. We have to grow up in Christ. Romans 8, 29, you can write this one down, and I'm going to get to Galatians 5 in a minute. From the very beginning, God decided that those who came to him, and all along he knew who would, should become like his son. So here's the deal, and I want, to, I want you to understand this, that you and I, going back to our big idea, we were created to become like Jesus Christ. Can we affirm that? Can we? we were created to become, if, 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 if our goal isn't to become like, more like Jesus, then what are we doing here? Are we coming here for the great breakfast or are we coming here for the fellowship? Not that those things are, are, are not good because they're good, but our bottom line goal should be we come into this place because we want to grow and become more like Jesus. Like I, we, we should want to be more like Jesus when we leave here than when we came in here. Are you with me? So this is what I want us to do over these, this series. I want us to dig deeper. I want us to grow our spirit man, and I want us to grow our spirit woman. And this is what I want to ask as a, pe as a preacher. This is a 10-week series. Oh, 
I normally preach about four to five week series. This one's ten. Today counts as number one, and then we got nine more, in case you want to do the math. Here's what I want to ask you. If you want to get something out of this series, you're going to want to be here every week. And if, if you can't be here, if, if, if something happens, yeah, we have it online and we have all that stuff. But, but you're going to get more out of it if you say, yeah, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I commit to be here. I'm not going to be like, hey, raise your hand right now because I know we're just going to raise our hands out of peer pressure and then something's going to happen down the line. But I want to encourage you to value your spirituality and to value your life with Jesus. And just make a commitment to yourself and say, yeah, God, I'm, I'm going to be there. So if you have your Bibles, Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to ask us to do something I don't do very much today. But I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of the Word of God. So we're going to be in Galatians 5 and start in verse 16. If you have it, would you stand? <clears throat> if you have it, would you stand? Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you will certainly not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the Spirit, and the Spirit desires what is against the flesh. Those are opposed to each other, so that you don't do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts. Can, can, can I just stop here? I want you all to look up. See, see, we're good in the church. We're like, now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry. And we're like, yes, amen, amen, preacher, right? But then what happens? We get down to this. Strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions and factions, and the church becomes quiet on those things. You know why? Because there's a lot of people in the church doing those things. Causing strife, Brother Danny, and factions. And we don't, we don't want to talk. We're good at those big, those big things that we think are big. But guess what? It's all one and the same. Envy and drunk, drunkenness, verse 21. Carousing. Some of y'all are like, what's Carousing. And anything similar, I'm warning you about these things as I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not... Now, now listen, look, it says those who practice such things. It doesn't say if you have participated in one of those things in the past. No, it says if you're currently practicing those things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Whew. That's deep. So maybe you've practiced some of those things in the past and you've asked forgiveness and you've asked God to, to forgive you and you've repented. Guess what? It's in the past. Move forward. Amen? Amen. But, but if you're practicing those things right now, if you're causing strife or carousing, and, and then I like how Paul, he just says, and anything else that's similar to all those other things, <laughs> right? Anything else. Let's deal with that. And then verse 22. Here's our text for today. But I had to read the previous text because you just can't pop in on chapter or verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. The law is not against these things. Now those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified, say crucified, the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not be conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. Bless it. Help us to teach it. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, you can be seated. Some of y'all are like, I wish he'd say be seated. <laughs> Listen to me this morning. You don't, you don't just drift into good things. You don't just drift from life... Life in the flesh to life in the spirit. Listen to me, you have to be intentional. You just don't happen to ap accidentally land into growth. Listen to me, a garden will not grow without effort. Amen? Amen. And your spiritual life will not grow without effort. Make the most out of this series. So I want to just get into this this morning. Again, our text was, main text is 22 in verse 23. But I want to give you three things this morning about this text and about growing like Jesus and about understanding what that looks like. And 
understanding more intently the fruit of the Spirit. Number one is this. It is one fruit, not many. This morning, what I'm about to just tell you right now is going to trip you guys up. Because we use terminology that is not the right terminology when we're talking about biblical things. But look at verse 22. It says, but the fruit, say just fruit. Okay, listen to what you said. Say fruit. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit. It's one fruit, not many. Listen, the the fruit of the Spirit is not a group or not a set of moral commands. The fruit of the Spirit, listen to me. I've heard messages on this. The fruit of the Spirit is not nine ways to live your best life. Amen? It's not just nine things that we say, well, if I do these these nine things, then then I'm going to have my best life ever. No. That's a terrible sermon series. Don't listen to that one. Although it might result, and it will result, in a better life to do these things, it's not nine things to live better. One of the most interesting and misunderstood aspects of the fruit of the Spirit is that the Bible teaches it's one fruit with many characteristics. That's one bowl of fruit. There's just one bowl up there. Are you tracking with me? How many bowls do you see? Just one. There's not nine different bowls, but there's one fruit with a variety in it. Are you tracking with me? And so when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, we got to understand that it's one fruit bowl. And again, I told you it's going to trip some of y'all up. Notice it doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit are. It doesn't say the fruits, plural, of the Spirit. It says the fruit of the Spirit is. One pastor I like put it this way, and I love listening to this guy. He said it's one fruit with nine flavors. So let's look at this this morning as one bowl with many flavors. Are you tracking with me? So, so let me ask you a question. If, if, if I brought an apple up here and I wasn't going to do it, but, I, but I, my luck, I'd cut myself and start bleeding everywhere and start crying. Because you know those little cuts, man, little paper cuts? Those are worse than you cut your finger off sometime. But listen, listen. What if I brought an apple up here? And I took this apple and I dissected it and I cut it out into nine different sections. I told you this principle's gonna, that's why I wanna hit this. It's still an apple. Huh? We better wreck, better in my Kentucky talk, my family, you better say you're wrecking. I take one, okay, follow along with me, please. I will speak slowly. (laughs) I have one apple. I'm not doing this new math. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) we're going to take one and borrow it from. and then No, I have one apple. And I cut it down the middle. Then I cut a cross section. And I get it to nine pieces. And I start to pass those pieces out to nine different individuals. And I say, hey, Brother Mike, what did you just eat? If I blindfold him, if I blindfold these nine people, and I say, hey, what'd you eat? You would say, play along with me, I, w- I just ate a... Okay. Now, John Spencer, do I need to text your answer first? That's a personal thing between me and him right now. About the wedding last night. But if I blindfold John Spencer, and I give him section two of the apple, and I say, okay, John, I'm giving you this, I'm not telling you what it is, and you, and you ate it, and you took a bite, you would say, I just had a, I, I was so, I thought you were going to say like a pear or something. I was going to tell Sister Tammy to slap you, <laughs> lay holy hands on him, no. And I keep going all the way around. I'm not going to go to Leah. <laughs> Pearl, way back there. If I give you section nine, and I blindfold you, hey, Pearl, what'd you just have? Pearl would say, I just had a, you get the point. 
You're like, well, pastor, like, duh. No, but why do we think when it comes time to Scripture that we're talking about nine different things? Nine different things. No, we're talking about one thing. The fruit of the Spirit acting in nine different capacities. Going back to the Trinity, things that blow my mind. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now why did I say that it's one fruit acting in nine different capacities? And I'm going to help us today. Because the fruit of the Spirit, this is not a trick question I'm about to ask. Some of y'all are going to think I'm trying to trip you up. But where does the fruit of the Spirit come from? Hint, the fruit of the Spirit, where does it come from? It comes from the Holy Spirit, right? Now listen, there's a lot of people that struggle between the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. I'm teaching you today. The gifts of the Spirit are plural. There's many of them, right? But the fruit of the Spirit, there's just going back to point number one. There's one fruit, not many. So here's the thing. The difference is God doesn't give you all the gifts. He gives different gifts to every believer as he chooses, right? But we all have the capacity to receive the one fruit of the Spirit, right? God doesn't want you to have all the gifts, but God wants you to have all the fruit. <laughs> okay, are we there? Now listen. It comes from the Holy Spirit. And I might be getting ahead of myself. Denominations have this all messed up. You know how you know if you how if, 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 if somebody has the, the Holy Spirit or not? You know what the evidence of the Holy Spirit is? I heard one person. The fruit, I, there's two. Can I get somebody in this section? How do you know if somebody's got the Holy Spirit? They have what? Fruit. Okay, all three sections are covered. Everybody's saved. Amen. Praise God. Your section is saved. You know what the evidence of the Holy Spirit is? Let's stop arguing about whether somebody speaks in tongues or not. Hello. Do I need to hang there for a minute? Can, can, can I tell you the evidence of the Holy Spirit? The evidence of the Holy Spirit is somebody that's living in the bowl. And the bowl is living out of them. Are you with me? And then I'll get to my, my next evidence of the Holy Spirit in point number three. But let me give you number two. It's one fruit, not many, but number two. This, this, this You're going to have fun with this one. Healthy fruit comes from deep roots. Oh, you're not going to forget that one. Let's say that together. Healthy fruit comes from deep roots. Listen, with the literal plant, you don't grow that fruit by focusing on the fruits. <laughs> Can I say that again? You don't grow the fruit by focusing on the fruits. In other words, what I'm saying is you don't grow whatever you're trying to grow by focusing on the end product. Are, are you with me? Fruit or whatever you want to grow, the end product will be the result of how you do the hard stuff. How you get the ground ready. How you, you know, get the right elements and, and all that planning stuff. Because what you really care about, yes, you care about the end result. But you're never going to get the end result if you don't care about the beginning of the stages and, and building up those strong root systems. Are you with me? The same is true in our spiritual lives. We will never get to the end result to be like Jesus Christ if we fail to focus on our root system. Listen, you will not grow spiritually by, listen to me, this is why I said at the beginning it's not nine things to, for your best life. Because if I'm just trying to add joy and add love and add peace to everything else in my life, I'm not doing it, I, I'm just, I, I'm not building my root system. 
Because I'm just trying to focus on doing something good to love somebody else. No, if you love Christ, oh, come on, you're going to want to love the people that Christ loves. Listen to me. If you, listen, you don't have to do five things next week to have joy on Monday and joy on Tuesday and joy on Wednesday. Because if you are living like Christ and if you are living with Christ inside of you, you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to have joy. Because Jesus is joy, right? You got to drive your roots deep into Christ. Listen, there's a battle going on in this life. Whether you realize it or not, there is a spiritual warfare going on in this life. You're, one side, the Spirit right now says, hey, I want to do, I want to be in church and, and I want to sing the songs of Zion and I, I want to give and I want to serve and, and I want to be the best Christian that I can be. I want to follow Jesus. But then, guess what? When you leave this place, there's a storm and, and there's a devil loose and, and there's an enemy of your soul and his name is Satan and he's trying to take you out through things that we see, through things that we hear, through things that we watch, through things that we listen to. He's trying to take us out. And those things are called what? The works of the flesh. And let me tell you what a lot of us are trying to do. We fail to understand this principle that healthy fruit comes from deep roots. Because many of us, I'm about to preach now. You say, well, what were you doing before? I was just setting it up. Listen, many of us are trying to take a dead rose bush. And you know what we're trying to do? We go to the nursery. And, and, and we take off rose petals. And we take those rose petals off and we go to our house and we try to staple those nice looking rose petals from the garden store to our dead rose bush. Oh, come on. Now listen, when you do that, somebody driving by, they can't identify that you got a dead rose bush. All they see are those nice petals. Because from a distance, from a distance, when you try to masquerade and when you try to cover it up and when you try to, try to, try to fix the surface, it's going to look okay. But if you don't have deep roots, eventually those petals that you staple to the dead rose bush are going to die and they're going to wither away. Oh, but you don't hear me. There's some of us up in here that we, what we're trying to do, we're like dead rose bushes, and we try to do anything and everything, like come to church and give and sing and pray and cry and do all those things because it looks like we're stapling a rose bush up to our dead rose bush. But here's what I'm saying is that we got to understand that people from a distance, they say, oh, that good, that's a good spiritual person. But here it is. When they get up closer to us and when we start walking, through the storms of life, what happens? They realize who we really are. Because we don't have deep roots. Give me somebody that's going through a fire. And I'm going to tell you what their deep roots are. Give me somebody that's lost their loved one. Give me somebody that's, man, that, that's been through a church split. And you're going to find out who and what people really are. The problem is that we don't have deep roots. Can, can I get an amen on that? We don't have deep roots. In Galatians 5, he calls it the battle of the flesh versus the spirit. And he says, those who belong to Jesus Christ, verse 25, I had to say this word and I encourage you to circle it. He said, they've crucified the flesh. They've crucified the passions and the desires. You, 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 you know what the word crucified means? It, it means they, they killed it on the cross. And some of us need to take those things that we struggle with and those things that we battle with and we need to go have ourselves a Golgotha moment. And we need to take some things to the cross and we need to crucify those things up on the cross. And when we crucify those things, listen, we make a decisive break because we're done with the old nature. We're done with the flesh nature. And we said, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. Now listen to me. Football season's on the horizon. Can anybody say amen to that? So listen, they have this thing called the huddle. And they go in the huddle. 
And back, back, back in the day, we used to have wristbands or the, or the, or we, we, I was a wide receiver, so we'd have to run into the huddle and we'd have to come up with Rover 22 right, 32 left, and all that stuff meant something. So now all they have to do is they got to just, they, the quarterback's coach or the offensive coordinator just talks in the guy's helmet. But they come into the huddle and, and here's, here it is. We're going to score a touchdown, guys. You ready for this? <laughs> Lyman, you better block that guy. <laughs> running back somebody's coming you better get him and then I'm gonna just give me all the time and I'm just gonna throw it to the wide receiver he's just gonna be running downfield and I hope to God he's running faster than the other guy that's the interpretation but guess what when they get done with the huddle when they give the play what do they do they say ready break some some of us haven't broken the huddle of our sins That's not in here. <laughs> because we're just standing around. Well, I know I shouldn't be standing in here. I know that there's life in the spirit out here. And I know there's a touchdown out here. But I just want to hang around here. Because I just, honey, some of those things, you better break it off. You better crucify that thing. And you break off that sin. And you leave it back there. Amen? You, you wonder why some struggles are in your life? Because you haven't broken that sin off. You're still living in the flesh. And God says, I want you to live in the Spirit. Look at verse 25. He says, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let, let me put it to you this way. The Holy Spirit is drumming out a beat in our life. And the Holy Spirit is our drill instructor. Cody found out. When you got a drill instructor in the military, when they say jump, you say how high. When they say attention, you back. We're not back in the huddle. Don't worry about him over there. Yeah, let's just keep doing our thing. Let's just keep playing cards and let's just keep doing those things. You know what? The Holy Spirit's our drill instructor. The Holy Spirit says attention, and we better say, oh, yes, God. God, 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 what, what in my life do you want to change? This is good preaching, ain't it? Listen, he, he's going to, listen, our drill instructor, the Holy Spirit, he tells us to get right and we better go right. That's your right. I know it's not my right. Some of you are like, Pastor, don't know his direction. He tells you to go left, you better go left. Holy Spirit tells you to stop, you stop because you're walking with the Spirit. Amen? And he says, let us keep and step with the Spirit. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 said, Just as you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live in Him, rooted and built up. Can, can I tell you the secret to having deep roots? You might want to write this down. Let me tell you the secret. This is not Pastor Gary. This is Jesus. The secret to having deep roots is this. Abiding in Christ. Write that down. That's a secret. Pastor Mike, Brother Mike, it's not very difficult. It's not tricky. But are we abiding in Christ? Because listen, when we abide in Christ, the Holy Spirit will reveal unconfessed sin in our life that's keeping us from a close walk. And when the Holy Spirit reveals that, we can say, I, I, Jesus. And we confess that sin. If there's a broken relationship with another person that needs healing, we deal with that. If there's lack of discipline in our life, Can I just be honest? There's some of us that have no problem getting excited about going to ball games, but yet we don't have that same excitement for being in God's house. Amen. It got quiet. Amen. Shouldn't we be just as excited about the things of God and being with God's people? Oh, my Lord, I got to open the Bible today. Oh, my, oh, Jesus i got to open the Bible. Oh, but we have no problem opening 50, 50 shades of gray. Oh, i oh, I got to... Oh, i gotta, I got to go to prayer meeting. But we have no problem kicking back and turning on the view. Amen? 
Listen, those things that we participate in outside the church house have an effect on whether we're growing in the Spirit or walking in the flesh. What you feed, what you feed, your life. Jesus said in John 15, 5, and I'll move on. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you are going to bear a bunch of fruit. But he said, apart from me, you can't do nothing. You want to have fruit in your life? You want to have this fruit of the Holy Spirit? We need to abide in Jesus Christ. Now, I told you, I'm moving on. I told you one of the evidences of whether somebody has the Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues. I'll just be honest, it's not. Because I know some people that speak in tongues and they're not of Christ. There's, they're different tongues. <laughs> Are you with me? And by the way, no preacher can teach you how to speak in tongues. I've had somebody tell me, if you stay after service and you tarry for the Holy Spirit, I will teach you how to speak in tongues. If it's a gift of the Spirit, then how can some person teach it? How can you have a Sunday school class to learn to speak in tongues? That's not biblical. You better run. Amen? And some of y'all say, well, I don't think he believes in the gift of... Yes, I do. It's in the Bible. It's a spiritual gift. Either we believe in all the gifts or we don't believe in none of them. Amen? I just, just put that out to you. But the first way that we have evidence of the Holy Spirit is that we bear fruit. But can I tell you this next way? And I'm going to line, line it up because Jesus said, and you listen, Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, you receive power. And after that, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. I'm quoting Acts 1 and 8 if you're following along. He said, and you receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And verse 8, and you will be my witnesses. If you got the Holy Spirit, you're going to want to tell others about Jesus. So number one, you're going to bear fruit in your life. I believe these are the two main, main evidences of the Holy Spirit. We're going to bear fruit. These things that we're going to talk about over the next nine weeks after today. But number two, you're going to want to tell others about Jesus. On the highways and on the byways, at the barber shop, at the gas station, at the McDonald's, you're going to want to tell others about Jesus. Amen. I was, I was eating breakfast somewhere the other day, actually last, last week, and our waitress was doing a really good job, and I just felt led in the middle of everybody. I said, hey, do you go to church somewhere? And she said, well, my husband's an atheist. So we made an agreement that we weren't going to, like, push each other's religion or non-religion on everybody else. And I said, well, that's, that's, that's great. And I, 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 that, that's, that's kind of considerate of you. But what about you? What about your soul? I said, you need the church body. We, we need each other. I said, I don't have one of our fancy invite cards, but let me just find a piece of paper. And I wrote the name of our church down. I said, I want to invite you to come to church. And, and they haven't been here yet, but that's okay. They know. Listen, take every moment. My third point this morning is living fruit is a witness to other people. You know, John 15, 8 says, This is my Father's glory that you bear fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. There it is again. There's the evidence of the Holy Spirit that you bear fruit, showing yourself to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2, 12 says, Live such good lives among the pagans that they accuse you of doing wrong. They may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that he visits. Can I tell you that non-Christ followers can tell whether there's something different about an individual or not? They might not identify it as Jesus, but they're like, when you walk into the room, listen, be the type of person that people want you to walk into the room and not leave the room. (laughs) Did y'all get that one? Be the type of person that people want you to walk into the room and not leave the room. Be the type of person that when somebody sees you at Wally World, they don't go down the other aisle. They want to they be a part of your life, and they, they chase you down because they know there's something different about you. And eventually, somebody's going to say, hey, what's, what's different about you? And you tell them, well, let me just tell you that Jesus has got a hold of our life. And you know what Jesus said in John 15, 8 and John 15, 16? He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and what? Bear fruit. You know what's very interesting? That when Jesus commanded us to go and bear fruit, he died. He died. 
Would you just think about that one? When Jesus told his disciples, Brother Dan, he said, go and bear fruit, that he died. Why? Because the next step was to take people to the cross. Think about that. He wants us to take other people to the cross and show them that the cross is the only way to live in this life and have availability to meet Jesus in the next. Bearing fruit helps us to produce the truth and promote the truth of the gospel. But here's what I want to tell you as I close today. Growing up spiritually is not an easy journey. And it's a lifelong journey. As a matter of fact, Jesus, or, or the Apostle Paul told the church of Philippi in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, he said, He that has begun a good work is faithful to complete it. Jesus will complete that work, and you can count on that and take that promise to the bank as you stand this morning. I want us, I want us to look at something real quick and think about this real quick. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want us to think about our life right now and ask yourself, is the fruit in your life growing or is it rotting? And this is a very personal question. This, this question is not for your neighbor, but this question is for, is for you. What is it today that you can take from, today, from this message today, this morning, to become more like Jesus Christ? Not your neighbor, not your spouse, not your boss, not your neighbor, but what is it that you can take to become more like Jesus? I want to pray for us today.